All right, guys, uh, looks like uh, we're live. Uh, can I just get a uh, mic check real quick just to make sure the uh, audio is good? So uh, looks like we got quite a few folks here. So, uh, all right, let's go ahead and see who we've got in the chat. So thank you, Candy. All right, so um, actually Scott was first um, in the early chat. Uh, I've got Caleb's Aquatics, Chewy, 54 Punchy, Multi-Tank Addiction, uh, who goes before me. So uh, at uh, 8 Eastern time, go ahead and check Chris out. Uh, you've got uh, Ono's Fish Corner, uh, Deborah Sanders, Pam from 54 Punchy, uh, Jay's Better Room. Um, Big D Smoke, uh, Reels Tanks, Kent's Fish. Uh, Melvin and I think I got everybody uh, just uh, just shrimp grannies here uh, Shelby Ray Lane's here 4g budget fish keeping uh, King and Queen cichlids uh, so uh, check him out on Sunday so uh, all right uh, so uh, let's go ahead here and uh, we'll just get into the subject at hand uh, so uh, we'll talk a little bit about uh, Aquashella. Uh, so I've been to all two Aquashellas, and we'll be at the third one. Uh, unfortunately, I do have to miss Saturday, but uh, that's how it goes. Uh, so I'll be driving over on uh, Saturday night or Saturday afternoon, uh, getting in sometime Saturday night uh, into Chicago. So uh, looking forward to it. Should be a good time. Uh, get to see everybody again. Uh, Madfish Divas here. So let me see who else we got. I make sure I didn't miss anybody else. Nope, I think I got everybody. So uh, if you, you know, I would appreciate it if you guys go ahead and hit that like button. Uh, so uh, yeah, so I'll be there Saturday. Uh, so it looks like uh, you know I've been kind of in contact with the uh, fish tour booth uh, people who are running that, and it looks like there's quite a few interesting events. Oh, we're, we're streaming. No, we're streaming. So, will I be dancing with Haley? Um, I don't know. That's probably not a real good idea. But, um... We'll, we'll save any of my dancing for the privacy of my own home. We'll just leave it at that. The only dancing I do is to embarrass and irritate my children. Um, so, uh, one fish, two fish is here. <laughs> um, so, she's putting up light fixtures. So, uh, definitely uh, been there this week. Uh, didn't get as much progress done on the barn. Uh, we've had a drain that's been... Or not a drain, sorry. If I have to dance, you have to dance. Uh, all right. We'll see. Um, but I had a faucet. It's been kind of acting up for a couple weeks. And, uh, and it finally, like, completely died. So, um, that, uh, you know... That kind of took up a lot of my weekend. I finally actually fixed it tonight. Uh, I was waiting for a uh, literally like $10 plastic part, and then now it works. So, uh, looks like uh, the Lumpy Dog is here. So, hey, Lumpy Dog, how's it going? All right. So, um, Aquashella is um, September 28th and 29th. Uh, it's at the White Eagle Convention Center in uh, Niles, Illinois. Uh, which is a little bit uh, northwest of Chicago. So definitely, I uh, was there last year. Uh, same venue, it's a good time. So, you know, all of the, uh, you know, Joey, Corey, uh, King and Queen Cichlids, or not King and Queen Cichlids. Well, Scott, are you going? Sorry. If Scott's going, Scott will be there. Um, I met KG Tropicals. Um, I know they're going. And quite a few other folks, JH Aquatics, um, so quite a few folks will be there. So definitely 
Sorry, I got too much stuff on my screen. So definitely uh, check those guys out as well. Uh, it's quite a few interesting events. Uh, there's some sumo wrestling, uh, bug eating contest, um, a uh, kind of like a two-person aquascaping thing as well, where one person's blindfolded and the other one basically tells the person where to put the rocks. Okay, so Scott is not going. Okay. For some reason, I thought he was. He wasn't, and he was, but maybe I'm just confused. There's too many people to keep track of. So. But um, I will be at the Aquatic Experience as well. So I will be there for the whole event for that. So uh, definitely, uh, Jess, are you eating bugs? Um, I will tell you what. Uh, bug eating is probably out for me. Um, unless you put them in chocolate or cheese, I think they're kind of out. But um, the, the the opening of the video was the aquashella, uh, so that was the uh, basically a combination of the basically the entryway for Dallas and for Chicago from last year. So I was playing around with it and uh, wanted to you know it was probably a little bit uh, mind numbing for you guys because I was you know it was kind of like jerky and going around. But, uh, but yeah, so that was uh, going on with the Aquashella. So uh, let's go ahead and do the Angelfish update. Uh, then we, uh, basically, Angelfish uh, were not very cooperative. Let's just leave it at that. So they did eat the eggs. Let me get over to that. We'll flip you guys over to the Angelfish view. So uh, these guys did eat the eggs. And I didn't fix my green screen, so you guys get a little bit of uh, funky green screen action here. But, uh, yeah, so unfortunately they did eat the eggs. It happens. It is what it is. And, uh, you know. So uh, hopefully they'll spawn again pretty soon. Uh, so that's the update on that. And I will guys flip you guys over to the cichlid tank for just a minute as well. Because I did do a lot of cleanup uh, after last week. We were kind of, you know, Scott kind of made fun of my uh, wiring so I, and my plumbing. So I did do a bit to clean that up as well. But, uh, yeah, this was from last week. Oh, let me check the chat here. Scott, you either have to dance or eat bugs. So, um, I told Rob I would do sumo wrestling of all the things to do. Which means I'll probably, like, get my arm ripped out of its socket or something. But, you know. Scott is trolling you made you clean up the plumbing. Yeah, he did. I mean, I knew I had to clean it up anyway. But, at the same time, it was time to do that. You know what I really... Uh, we don't want that scene. What I really need to do is I need a switcher. Because... <laughs> no, it was deserved. It was... Um, I'll take it as constructive criticism. <laughs> um, because it was basically... I knew it was bad. So I needed to take care of it. And it was kind of a prompting to uh, get off my butt and kind of get it taken care of. So... Let me go ahead. I'm going to grab the camera for a minute, and I will show you guys kind of what's been going on over here. Uh, it's not perfect yet, but it is a lot better than it was. So uh, let me go ahead and switch up all the uh, microphones and everything. And we'll uh, go over there in just a second. All right, so if you guys can hear me, this is the uh, cichlid tank here. Uh, there's still a little bit of a mess back in here, but uh, if you can see here, uh, this was all sticking out before, so I basically teed this off and uh, got all these wires kind of hung up at least a little bit better. Um, I still have to do some work with the wires, but it is better than it was. Uh, like I said, though, I mean, one of the problems is, is everything kind of goes to one central point. So you basically have, you know, cables for your lighting and everything going from all points of the room. So, kind of is what it is. We'll take a look at some of the fish over here. 
uh, since we're over here, I mean, the glass isn't clean or anything. I didn't pretty these up or anything. But uh, this fish right here is a uh, Xenotoka Aizenai. Um, I had two females. Unfortunately, I lost one. Uh, but these guys have been hit, but they've not really been spawning. So uh, we'll see what happens with those. Uh, this one is a uh, barred split fin. It's a Chapelothictus equestus. And if you guys get you guys the uh, label right there. Uh, these next ones are the, uh, these guys are pretty cool looking actually. They're, they're the jeweled uh, Gadead. Uh, they're Xenotoka variata. Uh, do have a uh, location on these. Uh, the next one uh, were some fry I picked up. Oh, thanks, Candy. Oh, I'll get you guys over here for a minute. All right, change the camera. Sorry about that. That's the problem with this is that there's, there's like way too many buttons for this. And uh, so we'll go back over here again. Uh, so this is, it, you may not look it, but it is cleaned up uh, a little bit. So, you know, all the low hanging stuff that was like right here, you know, that got moved back. It got pushed up. Um, I painted a lot of this as well. Uh, I painted it black so that you couldn't see it um, unless I tell, it, tell you it's there. So, and then we've got, uh, you know, I kind of moved this drain up a little bit. Um, yeah, so I basically kind of got everything up, got everything out of the way. I uh, got the wires up as well. And then try to at least get a lot of it behind here. Let me grab this light. It's going to kind of glare. All right, so let's go ahead here and go through the fish. Uh, this was Xenotoka eyes and I. Uh, there was only two females, uh, but I was hoping they'd be hit. Uh, this one is hit, so hopefully we'll get some fry. Uh, the next one is the uh, barred split fin, which I am not going to attempt the name of it. Uh, but it is a, um, I'll show it to you here. It's a Chapelichthys and Questus. Um, after that, uh, we have the uh, jeweled Gadead. So, you know, have the ESUs and everything else for it. So, and then there's the uh, Gadead themselves. Let me put that light on. So that does look better. These guys do look better with the light on. There. So you can kind of see the uh, the jeweling better uh, with that light on. But they're uh, pretty neat looking little fish. Uh, these are uh, some Pundamelia nyerii. Uh, these are some fry that I picked up. I've got a bunch more upstairs of uh, adults. And then heading over this way, uh, we do have some metallic black tail guppies and a bunch of bumblebee platies in here. And then uh, there's nothing in the last tank right now. And then I did look, work a little bit over here as well. Uh, this was really cool as well all over the door. Um, there's obviously more I can do, but uh, we got to start on it. And then uh, just uh, so you guys, here's the Severum tank. Um, I do have to get the auto water change on this, but there are the uh, Severums. Uh, there's one of them right there. Uh, they are Rio uh, Nene Wild Pot. So I got these from uh, Pleckle Paradise. And then uh, we'll go up here as well. Uh, since we're here, we'll give you a little bit of a tour. So we've got the uh, Xenotania Resolane Leopard Gadeads right here. Uh, I got these from Sergeant Tanks. Uh, and then if you look here, these are some pretty interesting gold guppies. Uh, they're a gold, uh, gold Delta guppy. Uh, these I uh, picked up at a uh, guppy show uh, local to here. And there's actually a shrimp in here as well. So these shrimp keep showing up. So uh, there's a little shrimp right there. Uh, these are some uh, half black dead one in here but it happens i guess so uh half black any color and then uh the next tank over here are the uh, skiffia francese which i've uh, shown you guys a couple times now but uh doing pretty good as well so let me head back over 
uh, to we'll put you guys back with the cichlid tank. And then uh, the the monster saltwater fish is doing well as well. Um, since I'm up walking around, he's hiding right now. So you guys can you guys hear me now? Me now? So we, did, we did, went ahead and put all the, all the, uh, the, uh, the cameras and everything back, back on me. On we'll uh, mute, mute the, the other camera. camera. All right. So thanks, Caleb, for uh, hitting that like button. Go ahead and check out Caleb's channel if you haven't already. Uh, it's like Rounded Rob joined us. Um, you guys got Echo? Still have Echo? Oh, fix Yeah, okay. Yeah, so I had to turn the other mic off. So, what I have to do basically is when I go to the phone, I have to go ahead and basically like turn one mic off, turn one on, and remember to move the camera. So, apologize guys if you guys got to listen to a blank screen. But, uh, let's go ahead here. Let me go ahead and catch up with the chat. All right. All right. So, yeah. Thank you, Candy, um, for um, for telling me. I appreciate it. I actually saw it on the phone when it came up uh, when I was walking around. So I appreciate it. Uh, hey, um, AJ, how's it going? Um, <laughs> Chris always sees the chair. Uh, he'll catch on. So, um, looks like Haley is here. So, hey, Haley, how's it going? Uh, so, uh, you'll be in Howell on Sunday and Monday. Okay. Um, are you there? Um, I think I know why you might be there. But, um, we'll, we'll talk, uh, we'll talk on, uh, Facebook and see if you're around. But, uh, yeah, you're about 45 minutes from me from there. So maybe we can meet somewhere in the middle if you got a chance. Or you can come by and check the barn out if you want. Um, it may not be completely, you know, film worthy, but it is what it is. Yeah, Shelby, I'm sorry about ghosting you. So, yeah, the plumbing's much better. Yeah, like, unfortunately, uh, oh, no, basically what that is, is it's a lot of, there's a lot of wires just because of the apex because everything goes to like one central point so like all the lighting has to like eventually end up at the same set of plugs so it just is what it is uh susan from soc's aquatics is here how's it going uh tampa tom's here as well uh so the echo it's better tampa tom um, all right, so we got to the bottom of the chat. So let's go ahead. Uh, uh, hey, Ono. Uh, Susan, Tom. All right, let's go ahead here and let's start off with the uh, Facebook posts of the week. All right, so let me go ahead and hit the first one up here. All right, so first one here is how to safely clean the inside of a fish tank all right so basically there's a lot of different ways you can do it uh, you can use a mag float you can use the mag float with the scraper attachment you can use a razor blade uh, you can use the mr clean magic eraser so there's quite a few different ways to uh, clean the inside of a tank um, you can even use paper towel, which I've used in the past as well. It actually works better than you think. <laughs> yeah, I kind of do too. 
So it looks like my wife's calling, so. Um, problem is with the phone. Hold on one second, guys. Put you guys on the. Sorry about that. Hold on one second here. Hello? All right, I'm back. Sorry, guys. Uh, so, uh, yep, so sorry I had a phone call I had to take care of real quick. But, um, yeah, so definitely, oh, no, I get it. Um, yeah, it's, I don't know if it's a pet peeve for me, but it is, you know, there's certain points where it's gotten out of control, but, uh, You know, but yeah, I mean, there's tons of things you can use. Going back to the question here about uh, cleaning the inside of the tank. So let's go ahead now. And we'll hit up the second post of the week here, and I thought this one was kind of fun. So we kind of found some fun ones this week because there wasn't. I didn't find a lot that uh, um, really, you know, was really like worthy of like having me answer it. I guess. I don't know if that's a good way to put it. So uh, this one's kind of funny. So the fun fact is that the uh, puffer fish will release a toxin when they puff out that is meant to impair their attacker uh, so they can escape safely. Ironically, this does not work on dolphins the same way. Um, it actually gets them high. So basically, so the dolphins will basically inflate them on purpose and uh, pass them around. And uh, basically, you know, pass them around from uh, from uh, time to time. So uh, Dr. Black is here. So Dr. Black does go on uh, right after me. So uh, so check him out afterwards. Let's see, Tampa. Uh, okay, make sure I didn't miss anyone's question. So yep, the puff puff pass. So the king, the king uh, Scott's back. <laughs> Why not humans do things to get them high? I'm gonna leave that for a minute. I think I fell over. Uh, let me see. So Scott is ashamed for some reason. Let me see where is what did Manfish Diva say? Blackie. Puff puff pass lay. Oh. <laughs> yep. So but definitely, uh, yeah, they uh, got the uh, the puffer. You know, gets uh, gets all the dolphins high. But uh, yeah, that'd probably do it. The ultimate puffer puffer pass. Yep. So, uh, hey Haley, how's it going? 
What do you plan on buying with the gift card I won? Okay. Um, I'm not sure yet. I'd have to check out. I've never actually ordered from the wet spot. So I'll have to check out uh, what they've got and uh, go from there. Even though I gave a really stupid answer to the second question. So, the, uh... All right, Scott, fine, 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 fine. We can't make Candy do all of it. Fine, Scott. Yeah, I've seen their website, but um, I've just never gotten around to ordering because I'm too lazy to call them. But they have a lot of stuff for sure. I think I made him. Hold on. Either I made him a mod or a Haley a mod. Oh no, he is. Dolphins and octopuses are aliens. Um. He trolls me in good fun. I. So. So you know it's all good. Um. He does you know. I mean, and he, I think he understands the one who giveth can also taketh away. So, we're all good. Did you just clutch your pearls? <laughs> oh, boy. Problem is, this is late for me. So, it's kind of one of those things where... So, if Scott, if you don't want to be a mod, I can unmod you. It's no big deal. So, uh, we'll let him go for now. I mean, clutch the pearls. Oh, boy. Oh, boy. So, uh, so we got, uh, all right. So, I'm sorry, I'm losing it a little bit. All right, so let's go ahead and hit up the next one here. Uh, this is kind of a feel-good story, actually. So we are going to go ahead and share the screen here. So this one actually isn't really on Facebook, but it's pretty local to me. So I'm going to go ahead and share it and slide it over a little bit, maybe. Let's do this. Apparently it doesn't fit on the screen. All right, well, guess not. This is the one I found on the screen. So basically, uh, <clears throat> the search for a 46-year-old turtle uh, named Churchy came to an end Saturday um, after the pet was found by a kayaker in the pond. So the kayaker who found Churchy is a friend of the pet's owner. Um, a frantic search was underway for the pet turtle who went missing in Rochester Hills. Um, the owner of the turtle said Thursday that Crunchy, or Churchy, sorry, a river cooter got out of the enclosure behind her house um, on Parkdale Road near Miller Road. Um, a man found Churchy in the middle of the road and released her into Howlett Park. So, uh, uh, so the uh, individual whose turtle it was was overjoyed. She's shocked, but so pleased. So, pretty interesting story there, for sure. All right, so we are up to 30. Here. Oh boy. Uh oh, can Candy's gonna give up the wrench. Uh oh. Nope. No. Candy, you're the original. You're the O you're the OG. So No, I it was churchy, but it's like it's late, and it's kind of a weird name for a turtle, but it is what it is. So I actually drive by the sign for the uh, turtle all the time. Uh, or not all the time, but I drove by the sign, and it was kind of like, there's a you know, there was a big sign out where I drove by the sign. It was like, hey, 46-year-old turtle, uh, basically, uh, you know, and then uh, there was another sign, you know, a couple days later uh, that, it was, uh, that it was found. 
Uh, so uh, Pam had that happen as well. So basically, uh, Myrtle the turtle got loose, and three months later, a kid found her and brought her back. So um, Scott's got to go to bed. So uh, so we can now you know mess around with him while he's uh, give him you know we can give him crap while he's uh, you know. Well, he's not here. All right, so we'll pop back to the Aquashella. It's not like this will be on the internet when you wake up in the morning, so you can find out what we said. So. <laughs> No, I agree, Candy. It is uh, more fun. For sure. Oh, boy. Hey, Scott, what does Liz think about your dreams? Or do you keep those to yourself? Uh, Aqua Balls is here. How's it going? So, definitely pretty interesting stuff with Scott, for sure. I would tell you Pam, but Candy might ban me. Yeah. Yeah, he's, he's busy growing out his playoff beard for the uh, Keystone Clash. So, yeah, he, oh boy. I don't know if I should just shut up and let you guys go. But, uh, Keystone Clash is going to be excellent. Yeah, a um, little far for me. Uh, his playoff beard, so basically, um, hockey players, for those of you who don't live in the north, um, it's sort of a thing, so like in March, to where they uh, grow the beard out and uh, wear the playoff beard. So he's getting ready to show all of his fish um, at the uh, Aquatic Experience and the Keystone Clash. So he's growing his playoff beard out or like his playoff, like, I don't know. I don't even know what to call it, but his peach fuzz. So that looks like a good time for sure. Uh, they're just, you know... At this point, you know, there is too many shows. Oh, Tampa, let's go Lightning. We know hockey in this. Okay. Okay. I was just... So, good night, Caleb Aquatics. Thanks for coming by. But, yeah. So, yeah. Um, there is some hockey more in the South than there used to be. But, uh, but uh, yeah, Scott's got his playoff beard going for the... Uh, you know, for the uh, Keystone Clash. So, so Haley, did Lucas ever eat the jelly beans that you got for him, or are those gonna gonna make an appearance at some point um, in a couple weeks at Aquashella? Okay, ta okay, Tampa Tom, listen. All right, you don't have the Lions. At least the Buccaneers, like, like won something. Like, you have the Lions who can't, like, hold a 24-6 to six lead in the fourth quarter and end up tying the game and got beat by a college offense with a college quarterback and a college coach who were both in their, four, in their first game and who haven't won a playoff game since 1958. Or, sorry, they've won one playoff game since 1958. Even in Australia, they know hockey. I know when I lived in London, um, they had hockey as well. So. Haley's almost made a second appearance several times during that stream. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I watched some of that, and then I, I got kind of sidetracked working in here and everything. But, yeah, those were nasty, for sure. Those, 
Yeah, those jelly beans were were uh, something uh, something fierce. So, are there any other fish you guys want to see? Um, but your coach's son coached in London. Oh, okay. So, give me a second. I'll pull up a uh, old picture of my uh, hockey playing days. So, you're going to have to give me just a second. Now we're going into, like, the... Uh... Go to you. Go to photos. Alright, so there you go. So if you look um, in the uh, maize and blue right here, and then um, the best picture is me underneath the pile taking out two guys from Michigan State. So, um, so that was many moons ago, but uh, it was quite a lot of fun. Um, we could probably show you the discus, but they're behind the green screen. Um... Yeah. Yeah, that was one of the. I kind of was kind of the same way. Uh, same way, Liz. I was just like, uh. I can show you the discus real quick. It's just going to take me a second to uh, rearrange the um, the the green screen so you can see them. But um, I can show them to you. to change the camera Yeah, they weren't down with uh, having me uh, put them on film. Um, I actually don't think discus are that high maintenance at all. So basically, uh, for me, they're just um, they're just uh, you know just require clean water like all the other fish. So nothing. I don't find there's there to be anything too hard about them. So, um, there's nothing in the rules yet, I don't think, about vomit. Uh, but definitely, oh, they're probably, you know, there probably is. Pam's probably right. I haven't read the rule book in a while. But definitely, uh, definitely, definitely, um, making children vomit would probably be the end of it for sure. Um, the discus get water changed as much as everything else in here. So, basically, uh, uh, runs, I kind of changed it up a little bit. I was running out of, and we lost connection to the computer, to the phone. So I think the phone may have, oops, there we go. All right. So basically the uh, discus, um, they get changed about two minutes, uh, four times a day. So not, uh, we're going to flip the camera. We're losing the camera over there. So let us go over here to that one. 
Yeah, Wild Discus would be tougher for sure. Um, and I have it all automated, so I'm a little worried about the camera. Let me go grab the uh, phone for a minute, and I can kind of show you the auto water change system. Uh, let me plug it in first for a little bit and let it charge for like 10 minutes or so. And then I'll show you guys the auto water change. But everything runs here on auto water change, so that makes it a lot easier. So I'll go through every so often in gravel vac, but usually I just let the auto water change kind of run and dilute it, and then it uh, kind of goes from there. Haley, I understand for sure. That's uh, that's true. I don't think I don't think Lucas is really down with the auto water change. Just think, just uh, just saying. But uh, yeah, I understand that. That can. I think with that many tanks, though, I think you need uh, someone to look after them. Um, or at worst, you could be, you'd probably end up hauling all those rocks that he's got out there. Um, I saw that I was watching his video today, um, where he was, uh, moving all the boulders around and that doesn't look like fun. So, uh, it'd probably be nice when he's done, but that looks like a very painful project for sure. So... Uh, water chickens are uh, not high maintenance. They are just water chickens. Yeah, they're just. <laughs> I saw that in the first video when he was like, "Oh my god!" When I saw the rocks, and I'm like, "You're insane, dude!" I'm like, "That's like." I've taken on a lot of projects, and some of them have been more than I could chew. Um. But, yeah, that one's, yeah, that one needs bulldozers and equipment. <laughs> but I get it, because I've done it. Like, I, um, my project fail, basically, is I tried to, I thought that I could tear our bathroom, which was the only bathroom in our house at this time. Uh, down to the studs and rebuild it including putting the tub in in a, in, uh, in a week um, and that didn't go so well so um, that ended up with me hurrying and yeah he needs a bobcat and like he needs a bobcat and like Zenzo and, and Joey to like help him yeah I yeah, those rocks are something else. For sure. Um, yeah, he's small. Yeah, that's. I saw that. I was like, oh my. But uh, definitely uh, still have the uh, painful to blow out your back. Yeah. No, I've done that. I did that on a treadmill. So I was carrying uh, my cousin, um, who was actually like super strong. And they use tilapia. Okay, Chewy, cool. <laughs> there was the massive rock in the wheelbarrow. Um. The only way I would move those rocks is if I strapped it to the back of my van and, like, chained it to the back and just drug them with my van, which I have a feeling he may not be down with that. Um, but I think that's the only way that I would be moving those rocks. Or, I guess if I could pull I don't think I could pull them with my tractor even. Alright, Dr. Black. Um, let's 
so yeah that rock was was kind of insane so let me flip the camera over for a minute and I will go show you guys uh, the, the auto water change it seems to have uh, gotten signal back over here oh <laughs> That's, ooh, and that's a problem. So let me unplug you guys here, and we'll go ahead and get the uh, auto water change going. And then something's making a weird gurgling sound as well. So we'll flip you guys around, and we'll go to... All right, so let's go take a walk here. Someone's making a gurgling sound, but I guess I'll worry about it later. All right, so we got the cichlid tank here. So basically, up here um, are all these lines here. So this is part of the auto water change system right here. And then I've got these, I've been playing with these. Uh, they're uh, Rainbird uh, sprinkler valves. Uh, Michael's Fish Room actually had them on his channel, so I decided to try to play with them. Um, not too bad. Uh, before I was actually just uh, for some of the smaller tanks just drilling holes in it and uh, going that way so if you go over to this tank over here let me grab the stool because we're gonna have to go uh, go climbing but if you see here like this just has holes in it where uh, the water water changes. so if you look like where the water is kind of out right here like right there uh, that's got some holes in it so that's how we're doing the uh, water change like for those tanks but I did want to play with the uh, uh, play with these uh, sprinkler valves and then uh, so basically let me go back to the pump some of you guys may have seen this before but if you go uh, here this is the uh, this is a uh, you can buy these at Lowe's they're a couple hundred bucks but it's the uh, they're the instant hot water pump uh, so there's a line that goes outside um, into the house and that pumps up from there and then it pumps all the way over to here uh, that's the red pipe uh, then basically it goes into um, and I gotta change these pretty soon but this is a um, used to be an RO unit but now it's just a uh, basically a filtration unit I took the RO off of it because I really don't like wasting the water but this is, uh, there's two uh, sediment filters, a carbon filter, and that goes for the freshwater fish. And then the uh, saltwater fish, uh, this is the deionization unit right here, which you can't see, which you can see now. So that will go ahead and uh, feed the uh, salt water. So this first bucket here is uh, freshwater. Uh, that one's for the saltwater fish. So you just replace the uh, DI water, uh, replace the salt as it evaporates with the DI water. Um, so now if you look back in here, um, this is connected to a float switch, which is uh, done by the Apex. So this is the, um, the one of the Apex energy bars right here. Uh, so that controls everything uh, from the lighting to the auto water change. And then, so, so the freshwater fish, I'll get the auto water change out of here. Uh, so right now, there's four pumps coming out of here. Uh, going to various parts of the fish room, going upstairs, downstairs, anywhere in between. Uh, so basically what I did uh, as part of the plumbing, which I didn't tell uh, you guys earlier, is I basically built this manifold here. And uh, a lot of it runs through that. That's hooked up to um, a J-Ball pump. It's uh, got like a two-inch uh, line on it. So pumps quite a bit of water, and that feeds uh, quite a bit of the system. And then uh, there's a mag, uh, uh, mag 18 in here, or two mag 18s in here as well. And then there's another pump in here that uh, feeds some of the upstairs as well. So it's a 
a little bit more evolved, but it's actually uh, pretty simple once you kind of take a look at it. And then um, all the drains drain outside the barn. So let's go ahead here and we'll put that back. And we'll change all of our... All right, so we're back. <laughs> well, let's go ahead and check out what's going on here. Um, <laughs> you try mind control and levitate the rocks. He is like the fish Jedi or the fish Jesus, so I guess he could try. Um, we're going to need a lot of puff puff pass for that. Yeah, for sure. Uh, so Elizabeth wishes she has a barn. Uh, so much room for activities. Yeah, I can fit a ton of more tanks in here. I just don't. Um, but uh, uh, we could have barn dances and raves. Well, that's interesting. Maybe that, that's probably a good reason why this is out here. So that my kids don't use it for other purposes, I guess. So. Um, so what else is going on? Oh, I want to talk about um, the video coming up on Sunday. Um, it's going to be a little bit of a long one, but um, definitely pretty cool. Uh, so when I, well, excuse me, it's getting late. When I was at the uh, MBI conference, uh, last uh, last July, um, I did get a chance to interview uh, Matt Pedersen. Uh, he is the um, editor for Amazonas and Coral Magazine and has done a ton of uh, different breeding projects. Uh, he was the first person to breed the uh, orange spot filefish, uh, which is a, a, a ridiculously difficult fish to keep. And then uh, secondly, he was able to um, do the uh, lightning maroon clownfish. And the, he's the reason we have that fish. So uh, definitely check out that uh, interview with Matt. Uh, it's uh, kind of hit a lot of things pretty quickly. Um, ended up being about 32 minutes long or so. Um, it was at a barbecue, so just keep that in mind. Because in the middle of the video, uh, the uh, barbecue is actually held at a uh, lake house. And literally, like, you know, I mean, the boat's, like, in the middle of the lake. But you can hear, the, like, the speedboat going uh going through the uh um going through uh the lake and in like literally it sounds like we're on like a racetrack it's pretty interesting uh yeah matt knows a lot about angel fish he knows a lot about all kinds of things when it comes to fish he was one of like um you know that we all have kind of like people who kind of you consider mentors or whatever in the hobby um he was one of mine and i even said that like in the beginning of the video so, uh, if you guys want to check that out, definitely uh, feel free to. It's uh, pretty interesting stuff. Um, so, looks like Jimmy just went live. So, all right. So, it's about 9.55. Yeah, I would not be doing that here. Um for sure, but um, I think it is legal here, but I don't know if it's legal to grow, but it is what it is. Alright, let's go ahead and uh, let me go ahead and go through the chat here, make sure I didn't miss any questions. Uh, pallets. I think I got everything, so do you guys have any uh, last-minute questions uh, before uh, we first sign off here? Uh, definitely uh, check out Aquashella, which is going to be... So uh, check out Aquashella, which is uh, September 28th, 29th uh, at the White Eagle Convention Center in uh, Niles, Illinois. So definitely a good time. I've uh, been to the last two, so it should be uh, a lot of fun as always. Uh, so you need a license to do four plants. I never, it's not my thing, so I didn't really look into it, but 
Um, it is legal now. So uh, thank you, Jay's Better Room. Uh, we try to keep them informative here uh, as much as we can. Uh, you know, we have a little fun as well, which makes it entertaining for sure. But uh, definitely, uh, definitely thank you uh, for coming along. And uh, I guess I'll show you one other thing too. So uh, we are having the uh, Fish Club meeting. Uh, the Motor City Aquarium Society is going to meet uh, on Thursday. So um, I am bringing um, a ton of fish for the uh, BAP. Um, basically, I've had a lot of fish breeding all summer and was going to breed them or bring them last week or last month, but they weren't going to do it and then they ended up doing it. So um, I actually have eight fish I'm going to bring in for Breeders Award. So that should be. Uh, so tomorrow I'm going to net them all up, uh, get them in the bags and everything. But. Uh, Quite a few Gadean species. Um, I've got the 10-4, and then uh, I've got some other ones as well. So uh, I may even film that and kind of do like a vlog style. And then uh, we actually have to get the uh, fish out of the pond as well. Uh, today was like 85, but definitely, uh, you know, but definitely it's going to start getting colder here pretty soon. So, uh, you know, we got to get those guys out. So, uh, with that being said, um, if you are looking to amplify your aquarium experience, uh, go ahead and hit that subscribe button, ding the notification bell. Um, and as always, uh, we're going to go ahead and wrap it up here. But uh, stay fishy, keep on breeding, and we'll go ahead and catch you on the next one.